On this episode of the Carolina Sports Guy, we're going to look at this preseason training camp. Here we are in July and take a look at where well, we're going to rank these offensive linemen. Who's going to stick on this 53-man roster? Who might make the practice squad? And which ones are going to be camp fodder and are probably going home? Before we get into today's video, folks, make sure you subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Pound that like button, leave me some comments, and hit that bell notification to be notified of future videos like these on the Panthers, Carolina Hurricanes, Charlotte Hornets, and major sports in the Carolinas. <clears throat> okay, folks, I'm going to kind of look at this ranking. There's 16 guys, and I did want to make a little public service announcement here right now. If you've already seen the video I did on the running backs, I made a terrible admission um, and I deleted a player I didn't mean to. I had him written on the list at running back and I had him ranked and somehow drawing lines and whatever, I crossed him off by accident. And when I went back and edited the video, I didn't realize I had did that until I started putting this list for other positions together. And I don't want to leave anybody out because you look like you got egg on your face if you leave a guy out and he makes the team. Uh, and I don't think he'll make the team, but I've had a lot of good things from him. But the running back I left off was the rookie out of UAB, Alabama, Birmingham, Spencer Brown. I've had a lot of good things about him. I think he could stick on this roster. Um, I don't think he'll make it because of how deep we are. He's definitely not going to pass McCaffrey or Chiba Hubbard. Um, he, you know, some people think he's going to be better than, than Rodney Smith or Trenton Cannon or uh, Reggie Bonifant, and he might be able to surpass one or two of them and make the practice squad, but I don't have him making the 53-man roster, and I don't have him making the practice squad, but I will be rooting for him now because I feel so bad I left him off, folks. Um, and I did have him at the seventh rated back. I did have Mason Stocky the fullback just ahead of him. Some people think that's a mistake. I'm only looking at the value of the position. But I did have him ahead of Darius Clark um, out of uh, Newberry College, who I had at number seven, and I'm bumping him down to number eight and putting Spencer Brown at number seven. So I did want to mention him. I'm sorry about it. Nobody's called it so far. Maybe by the time this video gets posted, somebody will say it. But I, like I said, I didn't I want to put his picture and his name up and everything and, and give that out before we started this content today. All right. The 16 guys that we have, and we have 16 offensive linemen. I could have broke it down, guard, center, tackle, but I kind of felt like some of these guys are going to be playing multiple positions. Some guys might play center and guard, and even looking at interior, some of these guys might jump out and play tackle and guard. And I said, you know, the best thing to do, and it's because what the Panthers are going to do, they're going to take the top 10 or 11 guys. I've got 10. There's a possibility I see 11. But if we do that, we're going to have probably one less receiver or we're going to take one less guy on defense. And when I break down my roster, I like to have 25 offense, 25 defense, a punter, a kicker, and a tackle. Now, I do know we're going to have, like, I think four extra guys on the practice squad, and that does help because um, I've kind of stuck with that 12 number, and I think it jumps to 16. So as we get closer to cut down, I might be able to do just one on the practice squad and what guys we think, who we can add on. <clears throat> but right now we're going to concentrate on these 16. I'm going to kind of start this video, and I'm going to knock out, like, the top four or five guys I don't think have a shot. And no knock on them. I just think they're going to be eliminated. Then I'm going to go with number one and work my way to the middle because that's where the intrigue is, folks, in the middle. So number 16 on this list, who I don't think will make it out of training camp, is a tackle, Matt Caskey. Uh, he's a one-year player out of Dartmouth. Very smart, intelligent player coming out of the Ivy League. Uh, he's really going to have to super impress to make this roster, folks. I just don't see it happening, even though we don't have one of the stronger offensive lines. Now, number 15 on this list is another tackle, one-year player as well, out of University of Florida, Martiz Ivy. And um, he's probably got a little bit more pedigree, a little bit more athleticism, but I just don't see him sticking on this roster. Um, just don't see him getting out of camp here. And number 14 is another one-year player out of Boston College, another tackle, and that's Aaron Montero. Aaron Montero, 
uh, is just someone I just I don't see again as another tackle. I'm, it's camp fodder. We're going to get a look at these guys. And who knows, one of these three, you never know, could really impress and move up to making the, the practice squad. You just don't know. But right now, I've got him at number 14. I don't have him making the list. Now, number 13 is actually a guard, but it's another one-year player, and he's from Auburn, and that's Mike Horton. I don't – I see Horton as being the worst guard on this roster right now, and I don't have a position for him, so I think we'll let him go. Now, number 12 is where we get a little bit of the entry because number 12 is a one-year player as well from Baylor. And remember, if he's one year from Baylor, Coach Matt Rule and his staff, Phil Snow and the other guys, even though Phil Snow is a defensive coordinator, but a lot of these guys are very familiar with him. And that's the center, Sam Tecklenburg. Now, he's got the advantage of having Matt Rule and knowing these guys so he knows what to expect. Number two advantage he's got is he plays a center position. Uh, probably would help more if he could play some guard, but the thing is we're razor thin at the center. And if uh, our paradise doesn't keep up or gets injured, we got to look for a center. And it's just a guy, I think, that we're going to probably try to stash on the practice squad. Now, he couldn't make the roster and surprise. But I think at the end of the day, this is a guy, unless he just shits the bed and kerplunkies, he's definitely going to be on the practice squad. Now, that's number 12. So now I said we're going to keep 10, possibly 11, but I've got 10 that are going to make this team. So now I'm going to start at number one and work my way back. Now, number one is definitely our best offensive lineman. And I hope we sign this man to a contract soon, get it out of the way. Uh, plays right tackle. I can see him moving the left tackle, but he's best suited for a right tackle. Our fifth-year player from Western Michigan, and that's not, none other than Taylor Moten. One of the best offensive linemen we've ever had. Uh, let's lock him up long-term, Federer, and get him in here and keep him here. He's the number one guy. Now, number two might shock some folks because number two is not the second-best lineman on this team. But he is a rookie. He was taken high in the third round. And we're not going to let this guy go. He's really got to go out and drink and drive and go out and run over people. Or he's just got to have his legs fall off or, you know, come down with some type of sickness where he's got six months to live. But he's really going to have to crap to bed pretty bad not to make this roster. And I've got him at number two because of, of that fact of him just being drafted that high. All he's got to do is be serviceable right now and improve. And he's not going anywhere. And that's Brady Christensen, the rookie from uh, BYU. I know he's more suited on the right side. We want a left tackle. He's probably going to end up playing right guard to start. We'll have to wait and see how that goes. Number three, our center Matt Paradis that we got from the Broncos, seven-year uh, veteran from Boise State. Uh, it's the last year on his contract. I know we'd like to replace him. Uh, maybe we'd bring him back for a team-friendly deal. Um, as long as he's not hurt and injured and there's no drop-off in his game and we don't have anybody who can surprise or surpass him, it's safe to say Paradis is going to be our starting center this year. Number four, the rookie in the sixth round we got, the guard, Deontay Brown out of Alabama. Now, why I've got him so high? Because he was drafted, and he does play a crucial position of guard. I see him maybe starting on the left guard. You never know it could be the right guard, but with depth as big as he is, I know he's a very big man. As long as he doesn't lose his athletic ability and get to the speed of the game and can get downfield on his blocks, he'll get in this game. But he's going to be a hard man to move. Uh, and I got him as our fourth rated. I wouldn't say rated by how good he is. Fourth as far as how safe he is to stay on the roster. And number five, believe it or not, the undrafted rookie. I've mentioned him in another video, David Moore from Grambling State. Not only can he play guard, both guards, he can play center. And I think at the end of the day, this guy's going to be very impressive. And I don't think the Panthers are even going to take a chance, even though they didn't get drafted. I don't think we're going to take a chance and put him on the practice squad because I think another team who's uh, offensive line needy will grab him in a heartbeat. So I think he's going to make this roster on the 53-man, folks. Now, number six, Trent Scott. Also from Grandma State, a fourth-year player. He's a tackle. Now, I think the thing about Trent Scott is, looking at him, uh, he's played serviceable. He's very good. And, and I know there's players behind me thinking, my God, you got him ready better than this guy or that guy. I just think he is. 
I think he's going to be a nice depth piece. He's going to start some, or he'll be a guy that will come off the bench and relieve a guy if they get injured or, or start stinking the game up. And that's where I got Trent Scott, and he's going to make this roster. <clears throat> Number seven is John Miller, the guard from Louisville, seven-year player. Um, I think he's just a touch below Scott. You know, he's a little older in the tooth, but I think he's good enough for this roster if anything but depth. I mean, I, I think the guy could start some games, but he's a nice depth piece, and I see him making the roster. Now, number eight, I really thought about putting at seven. And I've got higher expectations for number eight than I do that guy I just mentioned in John Miller. And number eight, we might even try to stick at left tackle. And he played some there a little bit last year. And that's the six-round pick that we had from uh, South Carolina a couple of years ago, Dennis Daly in his third year. Uh, I think he'll make this roster. He's really going to have to perform terribly bad or some guys are just going to have to play superhuman crazy to get Dennis Daly off this roster. I think he makes this roster without a doubt. And he might even start some games, folks. And he's going to be given a shot at left tackle and see what he's got. I don't know. Uh, he might be more suited at guard, but we'll see. And you see, we're guard, guard a deep, heavy, it's the tackles we really got to work on. Now, number nine and ten are going to come in here. You know, these are our free agent acquisitions, folks. Number nine, Cameron Irving, the tackle. Uh, Seven-year veteran from Florida State. He's drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Never lived up to expectations. Went to Kansas City. Would play with Mahomes and the Chiefs. Got a Super Bowl. But moved on from there because the line wasn't that strong. Played for Dallas last year. Never lived up to expectations there. And I think we threw money at him, hoping this guy can play left tackle. Now, do I think he'll make the roster? Sure I do. And he'll, he may even start. But let me tell you something. If Dennis Daly plays better than him and starts, or if Cam Irving gets in the game and, and crafts the bed, and that left tackle looks terribly bad, and we got some younger guys that can play just as good, don't be surprised if we don't move away from him. But right now, I think because of how weak we are at left tackle, Cam Irving, we're hoping, will be serviceable. And at the number nine, I say rated, not how good he is, the safest pick, because if he doesn't perform well, he could get cut. I'm putting him at number nine, and that's Cameron Irving. Number 10, the last guy, if we keep 10, I think I'll make this roster. He's very much in the same position as Cameron Irving. Pat Elfline, uh, the uh, offensive lineman that can play guard and tackle, a five-year veteran from Ohio State, is coming to us from the Minnesota Vikings. A lot of Viking fans did not like his game. Some think he stuck it up. We're hoping that, you know, he can have a revitalization of his career. I think he'll squeak on this roster because of money we paid him. But don't be surprised if some rookie or somebody young or somebody else comes along and plays good enough. They could bump him off and he could be out on the street and we save some money. But right now i got him making the roster. So I've covered 1 through 10. Early I covered 16 all the way up to 12 because Tecklenburg was 12 on the practice squad. So who's the 11th player? That where if we could keep one more offensive lineman 11, I say he may be the man. But if we don't keep him and we only keep 10 and he falls at number 11 where I think he falls, he's not going to be put on the practice squad, folks. He's just not going to be. And Marty Herney drafted this guy in the second round, moved up 10 spots, gave a third round draft pick away. He's never lived up to his billing. Now, if we could move the guy to guard, he might be a better guard, but we didn't draft him as a guard. We drafted him as a tackle, and we need tackle. But, you know, if he would bolster better than any other guards, we'll put him there. But the guy I see at number 11 right now, and I wouldn't say it's going to be a surprise cut, I want him to make the roster because of what I think he can be. But right now I've seen him as being the odd man out. And number 11, who's not going to make this roster, and that means number 12 is going to be practice squad and number 11 ain't. It's none other than old Mrs. Greg Little. Greg Little just has not lived up to the billing, folks. So, where do you have your ranking on the offensive lineman going into preseason and training camp? Who would you move? Do you think we need to add more depth? Let me know in some comments. Hit that bell notification to be notified of future videos like these on the Panthers. By all means, folks, subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. Smash that like button as well. And we'll see you on another episode of the Carolina Sports Guy.